How's it going everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I tried to do this video last weekend, but the cicadas were absolutely obnoxious, so hopefully I can drown what little they're doing out with a bit of music this time. Uh, let's talk about your engine's health for a little bit. So, I've recently had quite a few people get a hold of me, and they may have noticed that uh, I asked them, what is the blow-by situation of your truck? Now, when I ask this, uh, I'm just trying to get a base of what I'm working with in order to get you the assistance that you're looking for or try to help you out in any possible way that I can. I need to know kind of the basic overall health of your engine or I just need to know like what has recently been done stuff like that but we're gonna talk about blow by and what it what it could mean for your engine if you're purchasing a new 6.5 to you of course and you're wondering what blow by is or even if you're new to the whole like buying vehicles world or anything like that and you want to know kind of sort some things to check out and to keep in the back of your head like okay this is going to cost big money down the road depending on how bad this is so let's get into what is blow by on your 6.5 so what is blow by blow by is positive crank case pressures escaping the motor using the path of least resistance so before we try to diagnose what blow by you have as far as like whether you're getting it from worn out pistons or bad valve seats let's go into uh what is the crank case um the crankcase is any open space in the motor, be it under the valve covers that cover the heads or down in the oil pan. Basically, any open or free space. So, crankcase in relation to the, the motor and where the pressure is coming from. Uh, Pressure is coming from either the intake or the combustion chamber getting into like the bottom end of the motor or into the valve cover and it will go th go to the bottom of the motor via these uh, ports in the head coming down into uh, let's see these little holes right here that will then go into the crankcase. So how does positive crankcase pressure happen? Basically, there is a component in your engine that is either worn out or busted. Um, it can be whether you have bad piston rings, you have a cracked piston, you have bad valve seals, bad, bad valve seats. Uh, any one of those will cause positive crankcase pressure and it will try to escape the motor through the path of least resistance. Most commonly out of the oil fill tube or even out of the dipstick or um, through the CDR into the turbo. So let's explore kind of the anatomy for those who are getting into um, you know, their first vehicle or just getting into a 6.5, it's important to know a little bit about what's going on inside of the motor. So why would bad piston rings or worn out piston rings cause blow by? So here is your piston and on top of the piston, what is happening as it's uh, going up and down through the cylinder wall is there's a, an explosion that happens as the piston comes up to the head. When that explosion happens, it, the piston is then forced back away from the cylinder head. That will in turn turn the crankshaft and you'll make power. 
So how does that explosion stay on top of the piston is you have your cylinder wall. So uh, this is a bore in the engine block. This The piston rides up and down inside the bore. And you have two compression rings on each piston. You have your top compression ring, which is right here. Then you have your second uh, compression ring, which is right here. You also have the oil seal ring with the little spring inside. And when you have a situation with blow-by, if it was bad rings, you can see that uh, the ring, if I flatten it or... Uh, put it towards the piston on this side, you can see that the ring is forced outwards. So what's going on inside there is this ring is sealing along with the second ring, you can see, is sealing the combustion chamber. And it is keeping all of the combustion gases inside of that bore underneath the head. So when you have bad piston rings, what's happening is the combustion gases are trying to find the path of least resistance and they are zooming past the piston rings. If you have wore out piston rings, this, this will occur. So you have your combustion gases sitting on top of the piston as it's coming up and basically what's happening is that those gases are passing past uh, the comp compression rings uh, it will result in low power, uh, bad fuel economy, uh, of course, uh, the smoke that comes up through the oil fill tube. Um, it's that's one way that blow by can occur. Of course, the same is if you have a cracked piston. Well, now this uh, piston isn't able to hold compression and you're just forcing gases, mostly intake gases because you have your intake valve that will open up and the turbo will force air into the combustion chamber, then that valve will close off. And as this piston comes up, it's just driving all of those gases or uh, intake air into the crankcase, which would more, more or less be the oil pan or area inside the engine that is not being taken up by metal or oil. So why would it be a bad valve seat? So you have the combustion chamber gases and or the intake gases inside of the cylinder being forced together by the piston up onto the head. Of course, diesels fire off of compression, so if you don't have an airtight seal between the valves and the head, then it will not be able to create as much pressure as needed. So you have your intake port from the intake manifold coming in, and then when the valve opens up, it allows air to enter the combustion chamber and then the valve will close once it's finished its duration off the intake valve on your camshaft. It will then be forced back down by your valve spring. If this valve wasn't creating an airtight seal, combustion chamber gases will then pass through the intake valve into the crankcase and blow out your uh, valve seal. So you have two things that could be bad here. You have your valve seat, which is the mating surface between the valve and the head. And then you also have a valve seal, which uh, you have your valve rod, uh, here's the top of that valve right there. And then there's a seal between the valve and the head uh, 
underneath the spring here. So with the air being forced up, it is squeaking past the valve seat and eventually it will blow out your valve seal and then it enters into the valve cover. Now, once air is into the valve cover, you can see that it can go right down these open air ports and down into the bottom of your engine. So that is just forced air getting into the bottom end of your engine. Eventually it will make its way back out through, of course, the oil fill tube and uh, you, of course, have blow by. So now that we know what is kind of going on in our engine as it's running, let's take a look at how to check for blow by. One of some of the more common methods of checking for this, and it's it's pretty simple to do. Uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to be no rocket scientist in order to figure this out. But basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to pop your hood and take the oil fill cap off, off of the oil fill tube and you're gonna start your truck up and see uh, if the cap blows off. Okay. All right, so how to check with your engine running and I hope you can hear me. You're going to take the oil fill cap off and just flip it upside down. If the cap doesn't move, you're very good. I mean, dude, there's no worry in my mind about this specific engine. Uh, in my truck, as far as that goes, uh, there's no vapors and there's no pressure at all. So. God, I love the sound of just like a clacky old indirect injection. So yeah, you're gonna just take the oil fill cap off with the engine running, inspect for any oil vapors or any of that smoke that comes out, or you're going to uh, definitely check for pressure. Uh, pressure is serious and can cost you big time money in the long run, especially if you just bought it. Uh, definitely check for that. Now we're going to, I'm going to show you an example of what I consider a very minor blow by. We use my cat just to be sure. See how that cap is staying there? There's no pressure or anything underneath it. But I still got a little bit of this oil vapor coming out. I'll put her cap back on because Mama's truck stays nice. Andy's truck is so much quieter than mine. I, I genuinely love driving her truck uh, some days. Um, the axle dump can get annoying sometimes, especially on long trips, but we're talking about blow by. So as you can see, uh, there was no real pressure behind the oil fill cap, but there was a little bit of vapor. And you're, on any engine, you're going to have the minimalist of blow-by, even on fresh rebuild or anything like that, a very itty bitty tiny bit of combustion gas is going to enter the crankcase. Now, that being said, 6.5 use a kind of a mesh, let me see if I got that valve cover. So 
So here's the uh, passenger side cover, valve cover off of my 929 block. And you can see that there's a little bit of this mesh inside of that cover. Uh, you can see it kind of in there a little bit. And it also uses the CDR box. Now all of that is plumbed into the intake course where diesels don't make a vacuum or anything it uses the turbo in order to get those uh, combustion gases or positive crankcase pressures out of the engine using the turbo of course the little bit of oil vapor feeds into the turbo and it'll get into your intake that's not too big of concern what is concern is as you can see right here on the wife's truck that this is just kind of sitting in there and the turbo is still taking out a bit of that positive crankcase pressure, but it's not taking out all of it. So what happens when blow by builds up in your engine? Well, number one, you're gonna blow just about every oil seal in the engine be it the valve cover gaskets going bad, the old pan gasket, the front main seal, the rear main seal, especially, it is such a pain in the butt. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's easy to do, but if you keep just blowing out rear main seals in these things, the project gets annoying after a while. So it is important to get rid of the positive crankcase pressures. I have, in the past, seen uh, some people just take this hose and vent it into atmosphere, which is fine. You know, I can understand not wanting to get oil in the intake. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your truck because it is yours. And uh, who am I to tell you what to do with anything? Uh, I have also seen some people vent it into the exhaust, strangely enough. Um, basically, the air from the exhaust, if you face the hose going that way towards the back of the truck, basically what the exhaust is, it kind of creates a vacuum uh, in order to pull that excess crankcase air out. Um, my personal opinion, the best way to go about getting positive crankcase pressures out of the crankcase, but also preventing oil from just going into your intake, is to get an oil catch can. Uh, you can buy them on eBay, you can buy them on Amazon, uh, you can buy them on Quadstar, whatever, pick your poison. There's a number of different uh, oil catch cans to prevent oil from getting in your intake. And all you do periodically is just dump the oil back into the engine or just get rid of it. So let's talk about the CDR and that valve cover mesh. Basically what those two are trying to do is keep the oil residue from entering the intake. Um, kind of like the old catch can in a sense but um cdrs will fail and uh obviously that mesh in the valve cover isn't the finest of meshes so basically with an oil catch can you're going to route it from the cdr uh mount it wherever you want i personally would put it right bolted to the fan shroud and then run it back into the intake and again just periodically checking uh to make sure that, that can doesn't just fill up or anything like that another test that you can do is of course a leak down test or if you are you know wondering you know whether you have a crack piston or one piston that is considerably worse than all of the others, uh, you can do a leak down test. And of course, I am not going to cover uh, how to do a leak down test in this video other than tell you 
Uh, basically what you're going to want to do is, while simultaneously rolling each cylinder or each piston to top dead center, you're going to remove the glow plug and install a fitting in the glow plug hole and add compressed air. If you have excessive blow-by or minimalist blow-by, uh, you will hear the air from your compressed air supply go through the engine. Uh, it can be coming out. You'll be able to audibly hear it. Uh, you'll hear it through the oil fill cap. Uh, you'll also, if it's really bad, be able to feel it through the oil fill cap, like you feel the pressure. And that will pretty well give you an idea of like which cylinder specifically is bad if you're concerned whether you have crack piston or just one uh, piston that has really worn rings. Um, pretty good test and it's a really solid test. You can also use it to diagnose a head gasket as well. Um, but we'll, going, going through uh, blow-by, this test is definitely proven to determine whether your engine is too far gone or not. So that's another way to diagnose it. So what are some common things you may run into with excessive blow-by? Uh, things of that nature. Well, number one is hard start, especially if you have a lot of blow-by. Um, as diesels are fired off compression versus like gasolines where they are ignition timed, uh, firing the cylinder for a diesel requires the uh, compression to be more or less up to snuff. Uh, if you have excessive blow-by, basically what's happening is the combustion chamber gases are blowing past the piston rings and you are not able to make as much compression in that cylinder as you would where, you know, you have a brand new motor or a reman motor or uh, just a fresh rebuild. Another thing you may run into or you're going to run into is loss of power. Uh, especially if the rings are worn on more than one cylinder. Uh, typically, you know, you don't just run into only one cylinder is shot as far as the piston rings go. Um, typically, the engine is going to wear evenly for the most part throughout the engine's life. So, you're going to run into loss in power. Um, basically, the only way to take care of these symptoms are. Uh, fresh rebuild. Also another unfortunate symptom of too much blow by is lack of power and your fuel economy. Now I'm not saying that 6.5s get the absolute best fuel economy out of any diesel. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that they're bad on fuel economy at all. I think for a lifted 90s pickup uh, I do fairly well for myself and there are Plenty of people out there that will agree that 6.5s do get quite decent fuel economy. Um, with excessive blow-by, uh, I'm not too concerned with uh, just oil vapor or anything like that. The real problem comes with when you have pressure, especially like when you take the oil fill cap off uh, and you run into like uh, it blows the cap off when you start it up or you know you can just physically feel the pressure with your hand you can visibly see it um, you are being robbed of power diesels require uh, compression of course to uh, not only fire the cylinder but to run the engine on its own uh, gasoline vehicles need compression in order to you know run as well but if you're trying to go the speed you want to go and you're or you're trying to pull the trailer that you need hauled if you have excessive blow by your engines going to work harder in order to get the job done uh, especially like if it's to the point where 
uh, you run into almost a dead cylinder scenario and you'll audibly hear that uh, you'll, it'll sound like it's missing um, or a crack piston dead cylinder scenario uh, that cylinder cannot make enough compression in order to fire or I'm sorry the, the piston cannot create enough pressure in the cylinder to fire the air fuel mixture and you're down a cylinder um, this results in pretty piss poor fuel economy of course because your engine's trying to work harder to make up for that dead cylinder uh, well, that's just another unfortunate part of excessive blow by and even if it was you know multiple cylinders then you run into the scenario of like the engine is just real sluggish you're really not making enough power for the truck to even get out of its own way it's idling rough it's it's you know you try to idle it up and it's either slow to get to the rpm you need it to or it's it's just not making power at all so just trying to you know help you all out especially with buying like i've said buying a new car it doesn't matter you know what it is but we're specifically talking about six fives um looking out for these things when you go to buy say your first diesel uh it being a six five or just getting back into a six five when you go to buy these things look for the blow by the blow by will tell more or less the health of the engine and you can make that decision whether you, whether you want to, you know, bite the bullet and purchase it or, you know, um, you're going to pass and look for the next best thing. But, yeah, poor fuel is on. So, is there any way to prevent blow-by? Unfortunately, blow-by is inevitable. Your, vent, your engine was designed to fail over time. Every engine is. Of course, manufacturers and people would love them to go forever. But wear items in the engine, I mean, it, it's just a thing. You have metal on metal. Uh, it wears down. Much like a uh, picture of a grinding wheel. Uh, your grinding wheel will wear down eventually. But, of course, your, your piston rings are going to fail at some point or... Uh, they're going to wear out at some point. So is there absolutely a way to prevent blow-by? No. Are there ways of prolonging a blow-by event? Yes. Uh, proper maintenance has always been number one to me. Uh, you take care of your engine, it's going to take care of you doing oil changes. Keeping the viscosity of your oil intact uh again i do my oil changes every hello every three thousand miles and as you can see on my truck i haven't run into a blow-by issue yet um just taking care of your engine will really help prolong the life of your engine but eventually maybe way down the road it is going to need some work now, what happens when you have pressure on the oil fill cap, or is there a way to bring her back around? No. Uh, if you have excessive blow by, you have pressure blowing the cap off, or you know, you've already blown every seal out of the engine, it is too late at that point. Um, the only fix that's going to be happening uh, is you're going to be doing a full rebuild now I say this not to scare anybody but for the new guys that are looking to get into a 6.5 really just pop the old cap and give it a start and see if there's pressure especially the younger guys you know you may just be working a part-time job or a full-time job and you're really wanting to get a 6.5 just be mindful when you buy it uh, make sure you do this test try your damnedest not to spend the absolute most money in the long run 
a full rebuild is going to cost you and if you especially if you don't do it yourself if you're paying somebody else to do it for you it is going to be a big chunk of change out of the wallet and you're not going to be happy and eventually you're just going to wind up selling it because you're tired of friggin with the damn thing so just be mindful buying these things and uh, again with any vehicle in general because gasolines can also get blow by it's you know just take care of your motors treat them right and they will go the extra mile so is there a way of preventing this no ultimately every engine will eventually get blow by but doing the proper maintenance will help prolong it so i think that pretty well sums up what blow by is what to look out for when buying a truck with a little bit of blow by um i think that wraps the video up so thank you all so much for watching i want to hear y'all's uh blow by stories in the comments what was the worst case of blow by you ever came across what what was the malfunction was a crack piston just worn out i want to hear it in the comments love talking to you guys in the comments so uh, thank you guys so much for being active participants in the comments i greatly appreciate it uh any questions comments concerns please leave them in the comments below or get a hold of me on facebook or instagram it may take me a little while to respond because there is so many of you guys, but please be patient. I will get back to you. Um, just I want to help you guys out with your 6.5 builds in progress, and I greatly appreciate the support of the channel. So thank you all so much. If you are interested in any 6.5 or uh, IDI merch, Please go check out IDI Legends on Instagram. Uh, there's not just 6.5 or generic IDI Legends uh, merch on there. We do also have stuff for 736962, all of the IDI uh, motors. If you are interested, of course, in more IDI content, please go check out IDI Legends on Instagram. As soon as we get to 5,000 followers on the Instagram account, we will be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you legends in the next one.